for instance, what would you say you learned from Lao Tzu or from Confucius that you can think of at this moment? Well, of course, when you when you study Confucius or, or, or Lao Tzu, you, there are many, many books about it. But when all I wanted to do was just read the text. I didn't want to talk to read books about Confucius. I want to read what the Lunyu said or, 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 or the, Dao, the, the Tao Te Ching. Um, and it was in the course of reading the, the Tao Te Ching, I, I, I discovered that uh, the Tao Te Ching was about the moon. Uh, it was about not just the, the, the moon that we think of, it was about the dark moon. Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching was about being the dark side of the moon, not the bright side of the moon. The, I, I later sort of realized that the, the I Ching is about being the full moon, being successful. The Lao book Tzu's of change. Ching, yes, not just change, but, but what we, things change, of course. But when you read the I Ching, it's all about using change to be successful. Okay. Lao Tzu's Tao Te Ching is about being a failure, how to fail, how to be the dark side of the moon, how to be the weak rather than the strong. Because if you're the dark of the moon, then you're going to become light, bright. If you're the bright moon, then you're going to fade. And so this is what, what the great lesson I've learned from Lao Tzu's Tao, Tao Te Ching is the cultivation of, of being simple and, and weak and, and um, the feminine, uh, being on the dark side, and also not knowing so much because we, we discover that our knowledge is not really knowledge after all. It's just delusion posing, posing as the truth. And of course, I, I got that from the, from the Buddha, that what we think of, it, that we know, is just what everybody says something is so. Well, so I, I, I discover all of these, it's sort of like these are all doors. The Buddha door is about, uh, they're all about harmony, whether it's the harmony of the mind is Buddhism, the harmony of the body is Taoism, the harmony of society is Confucianism. And we're all, if we're all searching for something, when we find ourselves in like a burning house in a world gone crazy, and we want to go through one of these doors, we have to choose which door. And we all have different personalities and inclinations, so we're going to choose a different door. But we have to go through one door. We can't go through three doors. But once we go through that door, we're outside. There are no doors. There is no Lao Tzu, there is no Taoism and Buddhism and Confucianism. It's 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 no more no more divisions about what's what's real. Finally, um, we are approaching the uh, Mid Autumn Festival, where people uh, eat mooncakes, and this is you know, often the time when people would uh, write poems or recite poems. And I know that um, you have a particular penchant for singing or chanting poems. And actually, according to some people, that's basically the way how ancient poems were supposed to be recited, right? Not really um, as we're doing, but in a, in a musical way. Well, when I was first in Taiwan, uh one of my, uh, I, I studied calligraphy, went a uh, Shufa. Yeah. I kind of studied calligrapher with the most famous calligrapher in Taiwan. His name was Zhuang Yan. Anyway, one of the most famous uh, poems I remember from, from uh, studying with him and uh, writing it out with my calligraphy brush was the poem Zhong uh, uh, by, by by Su Shi, mm -hmm. where he goes, Mu Yun Shou Jin, Yi Qing Han. In Han Mu Shang Juan Yu Pan Su Shang Su Ye Wu Chung Hao Ming Ye Ming Ye Su Kan. This is a poem he wrote to his brother Su Che Su Tio mm -hmm. because they. They, they only met you know, maybe every four or five years, they would have yeah. a chance to, to, to get together. So I always just love this simple little poem he, he wrote about, about just watching the moon and wondering, will we see this again? Will we see this again together? 
Yeah, they were very, very touching close. poem. And yeah. that, so that's what I love about Chinese poetry. You can say so much with so little. 